In this video, I'm going to share with you one of the lesson videos that is inside my flagship improvisation program called Nail the Changes. Nail the Changes is an end-to-end -end system put into a course for how to accurately and confidently improvise over any chord changes, how to navigate harmony, especially jazz harmony, and truly nail the changes from the ground up. And all of the exercises are listed as a beginner exercise, an intermediate exercise, and an advanced exercise. And you'll see in this video how that is the case. If you want to learn more about Nail the Changes, there's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to my website, soundguitarlessons.com, and click on the Courses tab, and you will see more about my courses there. In this video, this is from the third module of the course, and it's that whole module is all about phrasing. So this is the first phrasing exercise in the course, and you'll see that I explain everything with a slide presentation first, and then I switch over to the guitar view and demonstrate every exercise in detail as well. So I'm showing it to you here because I think it's totally valuable on its own that you can really get something out of it, get inspired by it, get some exercises for you to work on from it. But do know that it's in the context of the course, so anything I mention about having learned something previously or something coming up, it's because it's in the course. Still, it should stand on its own anyway. So hope you enjoy, here's that lesson. All right, phrasing exercise number one, the power of pausing using space as sound. Because we did our whole setup in the last video, our kind of explanation of what we're going after with phrasing, these video lecture portions are gonna be quite quick because I'm just gonna be explaining what the exercise is and then going right into the exercise demonstration. So this exercise is super simple. We're gonna start our phrasing practice by just dropping notes away from our constant atonal improv that we did in the last module. Uh, you don't have to, but it sounds really great if you combine the feel elements from the last module, tone and slurs and accents um, as well when you're doing your phrasing. Let it just come naturally. That's what those other exercises are for. If they do get added into uh, these phrasing exercises, it will sound uh, really good and really musical. Uh, you don't need a metronome to practice these phrasing drills, but you should use a metronome when testing out of the exercise, just so you can test at what tempo am I able to do this successfully without mistakes. So to check off an exercise, do it successfully without mistakes at any tempo, and just use a tempo you're comfortable with and then keep track of your tempos for future reference so you can continue to work on these same exercises and increase the tempo over time if you want to uh, as far as you know going through the course if you were really going thoroughly and trying to do everything then just make sure you can do it at any tempo at least one time and kind of check that off and say cool that that's a huge uh huge benefit just to do it at any tempo one time and then i like to at least write down or keep track of the tempo i did something at so i can if I want to later work on it more, try to increase the tempo over time. So like I said, these are going to be really straightforward. And uh, we just have the written out rhythms here. We have all of the eighth notes just like before, except we're going to be pausing in the second measure. And that's it. It's a two measure phrase. We have eight eighth notes and then we land on beat one of that second measure. And this exercise, level one, any tempo. So it's just like before, that constant improv, that atonal eighth note improv. Um, it's like that, but we just land on that uh, beat one and then rest for three beats. And we want to do that four times in a row. And if you can do that four times in a row accurately, without a mistake, at, an, at whatever tempo, then you can say, cool, I passed that level. I checked out of that. Level two is that same thing, same exact thing, but in time you add on to it this other rhythm. So you do this first one four times in a row, just like before, any tempo, and you just keep going and you play this slight variation. Uh, and it's these, this is not all one note, you're playing any note. These are just rhythmic markings. You're playing any note you'll see in the demonstration in a second. So then there's this other rhythm. It's exactly the same thing, but that first uh, beat is just a quarter note instead of two eighth notes. So now we're doing that four times and then the next one four times in a row. Uh, repeating those rhythms and then the level three is the same thing where you're just adding yet another slight variation where it's the same first measure quarter note all these eighth notes and then two quarter notes here so it's this amazing practice of continuing with the free improv the atonal improv improv reach for anything play anything but with specific rhythms that aren't just constant constant eighth notes and do we have control over playing the exact same rhythm any notes, the notes can constantly change, but this exact same rhythm four times in a row and then changing that rhythm just slightly in this in this specific way with these rhythmic markings. 
just slightly and keeping control of that and playing exactly that four times in a row and then can keeping going in time another two bar phrase structure four times in a row where it's just slightly changed that shows a really good amount of control for playing just reaching for any note anywhere but controlling the exact rhythm so that's it that's the exercise i'm going to jump to the guitar view and uh, demonstrate it and go a little deeper on it so i'll see you there all right i'm going to demonstrate through these phrasing exercises and just to show that we can do this program this system on any type of guitar i'm going to use this nylon string guitar obviously we could do finger style or use a pick on any kind of guitar i'm going to use a pick just because it's the mood i'm in right now on this guitar i like to do that sometimes and switch around all different variations of how I'm plucking and different guitars that I'm using. So I'm gonna do these phrasing exercises for you. This first one, like we talked about, is just nice and straightforward, just mixing up our constant atonal improv. I'm gonna go ahead and choose 80 beats per minute for this and just demonstrate this level one exercise. So we just have these eighth notes. And then we wait and then we do it again. And that was four times in a row. I still do think that playing the, just reaching for any note is still extremely valuable in this situation. If you do do any of these in a scale, then it's gonna be helpful as well. Okay, you get the idea. That is our level one exercise. Let's go to level two. It's gonna be the same thing, plus adding on the slight variation right after. I'm gonna go up to just a little bit of a higher tempo just to get through the exercises, uh, the demonstrations, any tempo you want that's good for you. It's fine. So I'm gonna do four times of what we just did and then another four times of that slight variation. doing that short first note. Last phrase. Two, three, four, done. Okay, so I like doing that first one. You don't have to though. It could be, Right? I like to have those quarter notes be short. I didn't put the accent marking on them that they need to be. Uh, it's just a way that I like that it feels good. Let's do number three. We'll raise the tempo again. I'm going to go to 120. I did 80 and then I did 100. Now I'll do 120 for this last one. So we got to do all three of these in a row without a mistake. Uh, four times each. That slight variation each time should be fun. One, two, three, four. Doesn't matter what pitch is. Okay, next variation. Da, 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 da. Two, three, four. Slight difference. And done. That's it. Pretty straightforward, right? And you know, some of those phrases feel pitch wise, they feel um, satisfying 
for, because of the pitches I'm playing. And then some of them, like that very last one I played, is like, okay, that's a weird spot to end. That feels like it's left hanging. That's okay. We want to experience that and learn from it as we go, especially when we're working on our real music, kind of taking note of that and uh, continuing to do what works and avoiding what we feel like doesn't work is part of the growth and part of what we're learning here. Uh, and that's why I like the exercises being so specific, because even if that happens, I get to say, cool, I did the rhythms correctly. Um, unless there is that element of, okay, I want to also feel good about it. And if I'm adding that into it, then I'll do it again until I do feel good about it, which I recommended in the other exercises. So that's it for this. Let's go uh, to the next lesson. I hope you found that beneficial and helpful totally on its own. If you want to learn more about my course, Nail the Changes, you can click on the link in the top of the description or go to my website, soundguitarlessons.com and click on courses. If you want to see more videos from the course, I'm actually publishing a small series of them and I put them into a playlist. So in the description, you can also find a link to a playlist where there's more videos from my course, Nail the Changes. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.